Hi there. So you want to do some testing, try out some things, maybe build your own Cavidata, but you do not have the design skills or the programming skills to, you know, make the complex geometries of like impellers and diffusers and partition rings and stuff like that. Well, now we have a configurator that's actually capable of uh, generating geometry of your specific needs. So it's like a, a configurator in which you can change all of the parameters, like the diameters and the depth and amount of paints and stuff like that. And with it, you can generate the geometry ready for 3D printing or CNC milling, or, you know, however you want to design it. It's all possible. The only thing you have to do is work with the configurator, fill out all of the parameters, do a couple of checks, and then you can bake the 3D geometry ready to go into Rhino, from which you can export it to like Blender or FreeCAD or Fusion 360, it doesn't matter what you use. You can even send it off to like a CNC milling company or 3D printing company and they'll do the rest for you. The only thing you need to do is adjust the parameters to your specific needs and then you can just use the geometry and start running some tests. Okay, if you open the file, this is what you see in the large canvas, all sorts of spaghetti on there. And on the right side, you get your Rhino viewport, in which you can see the preview of the geometry that is generated by all of this. I know it looks complicated, you know. Ignore all of this spaghetti. You don't have to. You don't have to do anything. Okay, just focus on the sliders. That's the most important. I've added a couple of notes, as you can tell, to the canvas, just to sort of like explain what's going on. But it's basically filling out a form, okay? All of these sliders here are different parameters that you can change. And once you're done changing all of these here parameters, and uh, adjust the geometry to your liking, you can bake it. And bake it means that it goes from a transparent red blobby thingy that you can't select or do anything with in viewport. When you bake it, it becomes a solid model, Boom, like that. This one you can select, you can move it, you, can, you know, delete stuff on there if you like. But most importantly, these are solid step files that you can use for 3D printing, for, you know, laser cutting, CNCing, whatever, you know, you can use them. That's, that's what I'm saying. So when you're done adjusting all of these parameters, you bake the geometry, this is what you get. And this is good to go as were. They're all solid, they're all. You can export these to different, you know, meshes or whatever. You can use it in Blender or in Fusion 360, FreeCAD, whatever you. So that's the, that's the goal here, okay? Okay. So don't be scared, it's gonna be fine. Uh, you know, fix yourself a cup of tea, coffee, and let me show you how, how this works, okay? So what you see here is the assembly preview. This is like parts preview, you know, just to see what's going on actually. Well, it's, it's still hard to see what's going on, you know, many lines and curves are happening. So there are a couple of cross section previews, you know, it's like, this is the cross section of the impeller the stator, you know, this is front cross section, cross section of the diffuser, small, you know, projected section of the cavitation ring. And this here are the cross sections of the end caps, basically, where the inlets and outlets are positioned. And we can adjust all of these here just by 
using the sliders. Okay. This here sequence is basically working from the inside out, you know, so you start in the center of the cavitator and you work your way adjusting the parameters to the outside. Now, when we start changing the parameters, you know, I would advise you to double click a parameter, type in your new value, you know, that works best. Because if you, you know, click it and start dragging in, like a mix panel or something like that, it will calculate the geometries for all the steps you slide across just to sort of like simulate it. And since the, you know, sliders are connected through the SpaghettiOs to generate geometry, that will be like, you know, a lot of processing power required to do that. So, double click, type in your new value, press enter, and let the geometry do the updating. Takes a couple of seconds. No, no, don't panic. It's going to be all right. Depending on your computer, you know, might take a little bit longer, or it might take a little bit shorter. Don't panic, it's gonna be fine. So let's go for 26 mil millimeters, you know. We use millimeters over here, so that's what we're using, okay? Don't get me wrong, I like metric, or I like imperial measurements as well, but you know, this is easier because it's just, just this, okay? I'm sorry. This here is a drop down menu. You can, you know, select select your desired geometry in the drop, drop down menu as well. And as you update the parameters like this, you can just, you know, change the model as you go along. Now all of the sliders, they have like small descriptions in the title blocks, which tells you what it does, you know. Now the diameter of the bearings, pretty, you know, it says it, you know. Sometimes, once the geometries get a bit more complex, you might not know what a bearing does or what a, I mean, what a slider does, okay? Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell, and uh, you can always change a parameter and see what happens, but sometimes you don't catch it, or you're, you know, you're looking at the wrong section. So what you can do is follow these orange lines, try to find out Try to trace it and find out where it ends up, you know. I've made a legend for each part. Each part has the annotations of the dimensions, and you can always trace line back to the slider, which actually changes the parameter. One. So, the impeller is actually the most technical hardest part to do so and sometimes if you change the sliders quite drastically you can you know generate bad geometry sometimes it just sort of like happens basically because you know sometimes it's impossible you know, what you want So you can break the code. It's not waterproof. Let me see if I can do it right here. So then, and as soon as the code stops working, you get like, you know, error, errors, bad geometry. You know, it doesn't work. You can, you know, what you want. It's pretty difficult to do so, but you know, as soon as you think in logic, you can always go back, you know, and reduce, uh, revert the step you just did and that will usually fix it but sometimes you can just 
you know, make it too wide and not long enough or something like that. And then sometimes the, the code breaks down, okay? It's not perfect. For the most part, it will work just fine. And you can always tell in the cross sections when you did something wrong. And as soon as you did something wrong, you just take a step back and try some different values, you know. Okay. So now we're just the impeller, basically filling out a form. Uh, but sometimes, you, you, by the life of you, you don't. You can't tell what you're doing, basically. You know? uh, might take a while to just get familiar with it. And if you don't know what the slider does, you can always trace it back. So. And this is another drop down menu. Drop it down. Change it the way you want it. So the optional sliders obviously are optional and they will only work when you, you know, got the right option selected. So yeah. Now here we arrive at the first calculation basically. And this calculation is mentioned in the patent and it says that the ratio between the impeller entrance area and the total area of cavitation slots must be somewhere between 0 0.1 and 0 0.7, which is still quite a large margin of error, I suppose, but currently we're at 0 0.9. So that's not, that's not good. Soon as you start changing like these involved parameters, you can tell that the calculation updates. And now we're at 0 0.51. That's pretty pretty good. Somewhere in, in, in between, you know. That's a good one to check. Yeah, let's, I'm gonna I'm just gonna, you know, adjust some parameters, fast forward a little bit because it's basically filling out a form. So I'll see you in the Okay, so now we have arrived to some more calculations. What is happening here is it recalculates, or this is where the calculations happen, of the ratio between the total area of the cavitation slots compared to the total area of the inlet of the impeller. Okay, and in the pattern it mentioned it has to be between 0 0.1 and 0 0.7. Now, we're way out of there. It's, it's not, not even close. You see? Our ratio is currently at 1.14. So now we have to change a couple of parameters to fine tune this one. So we can change either like the size of the slots or we can change the size of the impeller, basically. And I want to end up somewhere in between here. So 0 0.6, 0 0.5 would be best actually so let's first you know decrease this size over here you know and we can do that by the length subtractor which adjusts like this value over here and let's uh, go for eight see what happens and now we're at 0 0.6 but the cavitation slots 
You know, they got a bit more squ square, and I want them to be like elongated, a bit more, a bit more re rectangular. Yeah, rectangular. So let's do that for six. Yeah, we're still a bit out of bounds, as you can tell. We're just currently at zero point seven eight. So what we can do now is maybe just adjust the impeller entrance just slightly. So I'm going to go back up, go to the impeller entrance diameter, and say like. Ah, that's the wrong direction. You have to go a bit smaller, so I would say, or a bit larger. Yeah, a bit larger. Yes, and now we're at 0 0.69, which is basically at the boundary of the 0 0.7 mark. So it's a little bit bigger, a little bit. Okay, 0 0.62. I'll take it. It's good. I don't know what what's going to happen, but for now it's good. Now, to check if the impeller geometry has been, you know, completely correctly adjusted, because sometimes there can be some some errors in the spaghettios, you know, and it, it's just this is a double check to see if we get like a nice solid geometry. That can be exported as either a watertight mesh or like step file for CNCing or something. We have to calculate the impeller geometry. This is what we see here is the preview. Just does it, but over here we have to double check it and calculate it. See if it's completely right. This takes a couple of seconds. That's why it's a manual step. I can do it with either every adjustment. I just made a manual step out of it. And if everything is correct, at the end, we have to have one closed B wrap, you know, so it's right here. Yellow box, let's say closed B wrap. Okay, we got one closed B wrap. If, th if this says anything else, or if it says multiple B wraps, or if it says nothing at all, you did something wrong, you know, something is not correct with the geometry. And you have to change it around a little bit until it works. But most of the time it will work. Um, now currently we can already choose to bake the impeller geometry. We do this by right clicking this box that says impeller geometry and click the fried egg symbol, otherwise known as bake. When you do this, the geometry will be baked into Rhino. And then you can do things with it. You don't have to do this, but for for like you know to show an example of a baked geometry, or if you just want the impeller geometry, you have to just bake it like this. You know. All the way down the line, we're gonna bake the entire assembly in one click, so you don't have to bake individual objects. But this is just if you want to check it, see if you've done it right. You know, just want to export the impeller geometry. That's fine. Just you can make it. It's fine. See? Pretty snazzy. Okay. We're going to move on to the stator geometry. The stator is this section right here. You know, it's like the. Oh, Alright, yeah, it's this. Especially in the patent, I noticed like the gap between the impeller and the stator rings, which is this gap right here. And if you don't know, if you don't can't find it, like I've got, you know, I've got it annotated in the legend, you can see it right here as well. It's pretty big. Three three millimeters is pretty big. I would go for like one. You know, it's fine. Make it make it small. But I do not know it. That's the correct way of thinking. It might be my S might have to be big. I don't know. That's what we're trying to find out by making these, you know. We gotta test it. And then this guy is a bit big, but you know, we can adjust it with this one.
Now, obviously, you want to have an outer wall on this cavitator, and usually you'll be determining that from the diameter of the tube or whatever. You know, depends on what you got on hand. Uh, but all of these small adjustments in this impeller geometry, they add up eventually to determine what is the total diameter of the of the housing, basically. So now we're gonna adjust the distance between the stator ring and the outer wall. And we can make it bigger than one, as small as we want. These variables are like the most, these will have the most impact on the functioning of the cavitation process, I suppose, but I'm not, I'm not sure, you know, I could be wrong, actually. So these are pretty much the most interesting uh, fumble around it. Now we go on to the diffuser. It's basically like the impeller, so I'm going to fast forward a little bit. And this one, this thickness, this vein spacing start and end is a bit fiddly, but then you now couldn't think of another way to program it, but it basically offsets this. So you're determining the offset over here, but it intersects somewhere. And sometimes it can be a bit fiddly to get the right thing, right, right geometry basically. But you do want these points here to be past this ring because this ring over here this circle you see over here is the partition wall that actually holds all of these veins in place might have done a better job of coding it but yeah you know it's, you can get working geometry if you want just takes a little bit of fiddly fiddling around basically yeah I like this now the diffuser geometry also needs to be calculated into one solid model so click the play button Wait for it to calculate and see if it's a closed B-Rep. If it says multiple B-Reps, if it says nothing, if it says not home, it, you know, you did something wrong. Most likely these points are past this circle, you know, you gotta do it right. Otherwise you get all sorts of, you know, loose geometries and stuff like that. Now, we can bake this again with the egg. We don't have to, but I can, I'm gonna do it for an example. We can officially expect, inspect the geometry as well. So let's look at, you know, this, this is the diffuser. Pretty snazzy, you know, works. It's a solid, solid poly surface, does the thing. Let's go, let's go down. Last but not least, we get like the end volute parts of the geometry you know these are I think not as consequential but you know to assemble the thing eventually it's going to be nice to have like proper end parts ready to go and over here we can calculate the interior diameter of the wall exterior diameter of the wall and the length of the wall so basically it's going to be I'm gonna it's going to be a acrylic tube or metal tube probably you know because those are generally watertight and easy and cheap to get but if your interior diameter or your exterior diameter you know don't add up to you know diameter you got laying around you, you can get you have to change a parameter to do so and i would suggest to, which one was it yeah i would definitely suggest changing this one and you know what i'm gonna change something right away so we're going to add these to there. I'm going to update that.
that we can you know immediately check on it when changing this one so most likely 350 350 will be proper measurement you can get maybe 350 in the exterior one I don't know 360 360 exterior diameter anyway what I'm saying is like all of these numbers all of these parameters add up to an exterior wall we don't work from the exterior wall down into the parameter because that's more fiddly to program and I want more control over the impeller shape than have the design being determined by you know the tube itself change the thickness well, I'm gonna change a couple of parameters over here you can see it I'm gonna fast forward a bit okay so now we made a couple of adjustments we did our thing everything looks pretty good we can calculate the end cap geometry see if we've made any mistakes all goes well this is just one close b wrap mm -hmm. looks pretty good you can even bake it individually to check it yeah, looks good just the thing now at the end where we at right now we can increase the amount of impeller stages let's say we want three it's gonna do the calculations produce the geometry looks the part and now do one last check If this is closed B rep three times, it's correct. We're gonna double check if all of the individual parts are calculated. Yeah, we updated this part, but we didn't recalculate it. So if you see a play button, recalculate it one more time. Make sure this is a closed B rep. Looks good. This one already calculated. Looks good. Go down and right. Let me bake this one straight into Rhino. Boop. And there you have it. Here's your customized, super snazzy, ultrasonic cavitator with your own diameter, with your own, you know, everything. It's all in there. You can take it apart. You can inspect everything, you can export things as meshes or as step files or STL files for 3D printing. And then you can and then you can run some tests with it if you like. You know, it's it's all good. Now you have the cavitator customized to what you need it to be, and then you don't have to do any difficult 3D design stuff, nothing, nothing fancy. You can just use this, you can send it to the 3D printer, it's all good. Um, I would definitely recommend saving your file separately, so do a save as, you know, save as and then you keep the original file and you can save this your custom you know your custom one as a separate grasshopper file you can always get back to it and you know change some of the parameters and reiterate on it you know it's all possible yeah looks complicated it's not that you know as long as you ignore all of this 
It's, it's going to be fine. Now, what I would suggest is to 3D print the impeller parts and the stator parts and the end caps and just assemble it with some rods and, you know, a transparent tube or something. Throw some water in there and see what happens. We don't know. Try it out. It'll be great. Thanks for watching.